that plant in the world is only Okay, 6.45 Friday. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Thanks for everybody joining us on the GoTo training. Good turnout. Uh, so this week's code of conduct is to maintain cleanliness and conditions of vehicles and equipment. So it's a good time to go through, throw away all the coffee mugs, and take a look at the machinery, uh, you know, sweep it off. Try to maintain our, our good conditions of our of our equipment. Uh, so safety news quick is another seven days without recordable. That big ice storm that rolled through didn't, you know, no one slipped and tripped. So it was really good. So nice job throwing all the salt down. Thanks to everybody that was proactive in eliminating our, our hazards around here at ECI and also your job sites. And just a quick reminder, Tuesday, uh, we have a first aid CPR training done by Keith Baker with the Williston um, uh, Fire and Rescue. Uh, it'll be like a two hour. Usually it's about two hours. At eight, Alberta, eight o'clock. Eight to ten, ten ish. Yeah, eight to ten ish will be uh, that first HCPR. I'll get with your supervisor. Make sure you get it cleared first. But again, it's it's a good good training to have. Uh, you never know. For, it's something you can use at home as well as here at ECI. So take advantage. Uh, so this week we're just gonna follow up a quick conclusion from last week. Still some some, some clarity. Oh. Can you go back one? Yep. I sorry. just wanted to, before I start, Yep. and I just wanted to comment a couple of things here. First of all, your comment about the ice storm and having a good job not having any incidents ourselves as far as a vehicle incident, but slipping and everything in, in this record. We're now, uh, this new insurance company that we're part of now, this captive insurance thing means that we're self-insuring in a way. So it's important for us to even stay more tuned in to, uh, you know, making sure we're safe and protecting ourselves, protecting our motor vehicles and protecting the public. And all that sort of thing is very important because it's going to come back on us harder. But then the benefit, if we do good, we keep the rates really low. So it's a really, it's an ideal thing. If we're, if we work, work it well, we're going to do really well, but we got to be more on it than we used to because there's not an insurance company backing us up. There is one backing us up. But it's at a higher level. It's like a bigger deductible, essentially, what we're doing now. We have we a bigger that, deductible. It costs us more, Ken. Yep. When we do really well, we can save more. Save a lot more, right? right. It's like having a – it's essentially having a bigger deductible. So, you know, we're self-insuring a bigger portion. So, good job so far. And we just want to maintain that. So, I'm doing the uh, the presentation this week. Last week, we talked about motor vehicle weights and everything. And there, there's a lot to talk about on this subject. So we figured we'd uh, return to it and expand upon the discussion. And one of the key points here is that when when DMV might stop you and ask you questions, you pull into a stop or whatever, <coughs> that they're going to want to know a couple different things. They're going to want to know a lot more than this, but related to the weight of the vehicle, they're going to want to know the actual scaled weight, obviously. And they are going to look at you and decide whether your scale weight is under your your gross vehicle weight rating. They're going to want to know that you're under your registered vehicle weight. And they're going to want to know that you were under the limits posted on that highway or bridge or whatever. And then separately from that, and kind of under a different set of, of regulations and parameters, they're going to look at your CDL if you need a CDL uh, license to be operating that vehicle. And that's based on the GVWR of the truck and of the truck and trailer combination. So just a quick refresher on the GVRW is a gross vehicle weight rating. And that's a, that's a design capacity of your vehicle and its components. So it looks at tires, axles, springs, you know that everything on the, the motor vehicle can be sized up on a heavier vehicle obviously so they give it that rating and then the other thing to think about is a registered weight and i say it's limited to gvw gvwr but it's of the tow vehicle but it's probably not really because they don't care <laughs> they don't care what you rate it at 
when you register because they get more money. A lot more money. <laughs> they like it when you register. They like that, yeah. So realistically, when you do, if you're renting your personal vehicle, you have to kind of figure out where to be. And the same with the company. So I have this card right here, which comes out of the, uh, doesn't say here, oh, U.S. Department of Transportation. So I think this is in the, the FM, FCMA yes. manual. I think it's right out of here. I have a laminated card that I keep handy. And it talks about the different classes of CDL drivers. There's a, the Group A, which I call it just Class A, B, and C. C is like passenger vehicles, buses, and stuff, so it doesn't really affect this. A is the, the big tractor-trailer combinations, and that was what we were talking about last week, where if you have something in excess of 26,000 pounds and you have a, a trailer, you're towing a trailer that is in excess of 10,000. That's on the GVWR. So if your combination added together is in excess of 26,000, you need an A. If you're a single vehicle in excess of 26,000, like a dump truck, a heavier dump truck, a triax, and you're towing something less than 10,000 pounds GVRW, you're good with just a Class B. So Class A is a big truck, or even a small truck sometimes in excess of, with a trailer, towing a trailer in excess of 10,000. So one of the things you gotta know your GVRW of your vehicle, and this is off, uh, I don't even know if we have the vehicle anymore, it's an older picture, but this is uh, the tag on the door, or on the, the door jam, and it says that the GVRW is 7,258 kilograms or 16,000 pounds. So that's a key piece of information. And then your trailer typically is tagged. Homemade trailers aren't. This says the GVWR is a 44, 91 kilograms or 9,900 pounds. See, a lot of trailers are sized just under the 10,000 intentionally. And so the question is, when do I need a CDL, right? Well, there's a, a lot of different combinations that will get you different results. So th these are just examples to show you on a truck, the tow truck, tow vehicle of, say, 12,000 in a trailer that's just over the 10,000 limit, your combined is 22. You're, you're good without a CDL anyway. You don't meet the 26,000 pound threshold. If you have a 16,000 pound GPWR truck, and you're pulling a trailer in excess of 10,000, your combined is in excess of that 26, so you need an A. If you're a 16,000 pound tow truck, and your trailer is under that 10,000, like in this case, it's under 10,000, and the combination is under that 26,000, you're gonna need nothing. And then you could also have this situation where you have a fairly light duty tow truck, which is not an advisable <laughs> category, and then have a heavy trailer, a 14,000 pound trailer, which is the next step up typically from the, the 9,900 9, pound trailer. Your combined is eight and 14, 22,000. So you don't need a CDL in that case. Now, if you're pulling that down the road, they might get you on other stuff but they're not gonna get you on the CDL. And then the other example is if you have the 26,000 pound truck. So one of our heavy, or one of our heavier dump, small dump trucks, like the, the small freight liner, there's an international, a couple of them now, three or four of them now. And you're pulling a heavy trailer, oops, sorry, pulling a light trailer under the 10,000, you don't, your combined doesn't get added together and you don't need a CDL. So if you're pulling one of those 9,900 pound trailers behind a, you know, the five yard truck, you're good. If you're over 26,000 on your truck, it means you need a CDL first of all, just to drive that vehicle. If you have a, a tow, a trailer, under the 10,000, you don't add the numbers together, you just go back to this one, and you're good with a Class B. If you're 26,000 on your 
your truck, your tow vehicle. And then you have a trailer that's another 100 pounds greater capacity or 101 pounds. You have to add these two together and then you're in excess of that 26,000, but you need a class A. So all this is independent of those other issues about, you know, what your registered vehicle weight is, what your, uh, you know, your travel restrictions on the posted road and all those things. And, and a whole host of other things like load securement and other things like that. But this shows that it's pretty complicated, but you got to know the GVRW of your tow vehicle and your trailer. Add them together. You can get one of these cards. We can make them available. They'll be on the app shortly. Okay, good. All right. So, okay. Ken, that, so you don't add the trailer if it's less than 10. That's right. And you do if it's over 10. That's right. Okay. That's part of what this really gets, gets across. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can buy and it's all about CDL, nothing about registered weight, nothing about your posted, right? Because you can be you can be overweight on a road, but your CDL is still within those parameters here. Okay, they won't get you on a CDL, but they might get you on an overweight. Overweight, over axle weight. Over axle weight too, especially on the heavier trucks. They go, yeah, they the measure smaller trucks. smaller trucks. They'll measure an axle and everything. Yeah, right. So your it's weight distribution, tongue load. I mean, they rate. They rate your tow vehicle based on the, the towing capacity, too, of your tow vehicle. You're talking about if I put a 27 on a little trailer, if I walk that 27 forward and put more weight on the truck instead of putting it on the trailer. They, they can, if they want to. They can, yeah, they can find uh, whether your front axle on your trailer is heavier than the rear axle, and then your front axle on your truck and your steer axle doesn't have the allotted weight for the rest of the vehicle. So if if they're gonna if they want to, they're gonna write you a ticket. Right, simple. That's no doubt. Just that simple <laughs> that, that, they make no, the laws intentionally confusing so they can. So there's <laughs> then we don't want to argue. Yeah. Yeah. Take the ticket. Do air brakes play into this Larry? Are uh, your rating? No. They don't? No. I always thought they did for C D L. Well, if you're, you have to have a, you have to have your your uh, endorsement if it's a CDL vehicle. Right. But the, we have air brakes on non CDL vehicles, which I do not need that, the endorsement. Unless, unless you work on them, right? Unless you work on them. Right? If you work on those, you need that endorsement. Right? Like the new water truck that's thirty-three acres. Yes. Okay. So you can endorsement on those. So there's a lot to it. So the last time we met, one question that was raised by Jesse was your registration of your truck. Does it need to be the whole load that you're on, right? Including what's on your trailer. Yes, yes. it should. So that, that was the one question. And, you know, I, I think also what you got to remember is that it shouldn't have to be the full GVRW of your trailer plus the full GVRW of your your pickup truck. It should be. It should okay. be. What are we going to haul? Right, but if you're, you know, it, it's like let's use the example of a of a one ton truck, a dump truck. You don't load it, fill it, and then hook onto a trailer with a load. You know, you really should only be doing one or the other. The same with a, a pickup weigh, truck too. What you're intending on weighing. Right. So pretty much you should register for that 26,000. Well, not really, I, because you're not going to probably pull that much with your your truck, right? right. You you might have the combined, like I said, you might have the combined, your trailer plus your truck might be that much, but you're not going to max out both when you pull a, a load. Weight. You're only going to pull, if you pull, you know, a 35 or 27, you've got, you know, say 7,000, 8,000 pounds there and 6,000 for your truck or 7,000 for your truck. Basically, your registration needs to exceed the GCWR. No, no, it doesn't. But the what you're hauling weight. it does. Yeah, yeah. So what you're actually your actual scaled weight has to make sure it's there. But if you got pulled over, and your right? Registration right. Trailer weight. But you don't have to design for the full capacity of each one. And if you do, you shouldn't be running that load anyway. Probably. If you're running that load, if you're running the full load of everything, you're 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 over doing something. <laughs> And it's like the one tons, you know how the one tons with a, with a good, not a good load, but even an average load of gravel, 
I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to be pulling anything behind it <laughs> because you're right up to the limit of that that tow vehicle before you even put a trailer on. So what Jesse was just saying is if you drive onto a scale with your whole situation and it weighs fourteen thousand, right? And you're registered for fifteen, you're good. You're good. You're good. But if it's the other way around when you're registered for fourteen and you weigh fifteen, they're gonna get you. Yeah. They could. The possibility of it is <laughs> they give you ten percent. Usually. If you're within and, 10%, they'll wait. Okay. And then it depends on who's in line behind you. That they're if they if they see Toby behind you, they're gonna get Toby. They're gonna wait. Hey, get out of the way, buddy. We got Toby coming in here. That's correct. If it's got a commercial tag on it, so literally you can drive by, and if they wanted to, they can come out and chase you down. Oh, they would. If they, they wanted to, they don't have to stop unless yeah. you have a DMV um, sticker on it. You read it, it's a truck. So if you've got a truck on the license plate, you should pull in, they'll fly you through. Yeah. Yeah, they, normally if there's any doubt, <laughs> pull in and they just kind of wave you through. Yeah, they if you're a pickup them. truck, I don't think you ever have to worry. If you're a pickup truck, a heavier pickup right. truck, pulling a trailer, then I think you would need to go through and just let them tell you to keep going or, or maybe they'll check you. Okay, well, we'll move on here to uh, safety meeting announcement still at 645. We'll probably be changing over sometime, you know, in April. And for this week's project, we're highlighting the uh, St. Albans Wastewater Treatment Facility, the primary clarifier. who are contracted with Penta. This job's been going on for a little bit now. Uh, to construct the improvements of an existing wastewater treatment plant, and the scope includes new concrete walls, concrete deck, structural slabs, and other miscellaneous concrete uh, work required, also requiring some challenging form work. And total about 500 yards of concrete across three tanks that ECI is contracted to build. And part of the project is phased, so they can keep a couple of the clarifiers in service during shutdown of the other for this work. And it's just a small portion of the total work on this wastewater treatment facility. And the anticipated completion date is mid-April. And there's some, uh, you know, pumping and other stuff to be done after we're done and phased in with our work. This was probably, this isn't too recent, is it? I don't think. Um, no snow. But we are, yeah, there's no snow. We are back, and this shows you some of the interesting, looks like some kind of baffle there, or weir or something inside of the clarifier. Some kind of interesting form work there with slanted walls and things. So th this is ongoing. We're back on that job. And it's, uh, we're looking to do some more of that. It's like they clean them up pretty good before they get you in there, too, doesn't it? Probably t still smells a little. <laughs> I would think. <laughs> I would think so. power, power washes out for us. So yep. They, they did a good job there. That's good. Yeah. Well, soon. And they'll start using it. Right. Yep. <laughs> so, then for a project, the archives, photo archives, this is, uh, this is Middlesex Embankment. A few weeks ago, we had maybe another one in Middlesex, Culvert. This is not the same location. This is further north, I believe. Culvert's down, maybe down there around the corner. It's been a, a perennial problem for the railroad here, pretty much. Because you can see that the totally the embankment's right there, down on the river. And, you know, it's not too bad a flow right now, but when the water level comes up, it moves pretty good. This was a year after we did the AT&T fiber optic for, by rail plowing. And this area, after the rail plow went through this area, started to, it always had been a little funky. And then we were paid to go back and repair all that. And it was, all the stone was brought in with dumper cars. So. so that's what we got. Have a good day out there. And remember to stay safe. Yay. Yeah, no.